Hello, good people. I hope you are doing well. Today, I want to handle a question that a number of people have asked me. And um, I've received quite a number of comments and also a few emails about this question or related to this question. And that's why I wanted to just make a long video that I will go into detail and explain as much as I can about this topic. So, of course, the question is, why does my mind wander when I pray in tongues? So, I will want to dive deep into this topic and discuss as many things as I can. And also share some of my personal experiences with the same, with the same challenge. And I hope that will be beneficial to you if you also have the same challenge. Uh, but before that... Uh, there is something that has been on my mind that uh, I've thought about and that is uh, I've been asking you people for donations because this work does rely on your donations so I've been asking for your donations but I've been feeling like I have not been giving a report of these donations you see I'm a very okay I love being very organized and how I run my things even my very private life is very organized so i have i have a personal budget i have a very structured way of living and so i've recorded every other donations that i've received in my finances and all that so i felt it's just a good thing for me to to share with you so i intend to be doing this because uh, this is the this is today's date let me confirm Today is date two when I'm recording this video, but the video will be going live. That should be about date four. That will be Monday. So I want to be as transparent as possible and also be giving you this monthly reports because uh, I do have my own monthly reports that I usually record and uh, make them. And in fact, also in this video, the topic I'll be discussing today, this one will also play a role. You will see how. So let me just scroll to my, to my budget so that I give you a good report. Um, so I've not been, I think I started asking for donations from July this year, but, um, I didn't record the month of July, so I began recording the month of August. So in August now, I live in Kenya, so this report is in Kenyan shillings. I usually convert to Kenyan shillings the money that I receive because I receive in dollars, so I convert to Kenyan shillings. One dollar is about 150 Kenyan shillings, so you can do the mathematics, the rough estimate. So the month of August, the total don donations were 19,000 Kenyan shillings, 19,201. So that should be about, um, about 113 or 14 dollars, about 113 or 14 dollars. So those are the donations of August. In September, the donations were, um, uh, the donations amounted to 7,496 Kenyan shillings. So you convert that should be about uh, 40 to 50, about 50 something dollars, 51 or 52 dollars. Eh? Then um, the month of October, uh, the donations were 13,808 shillings. So again, when you convert that should be about 90 dollars, 80 something, 90 dollars. And then uh, the month of November, the previous month, the, the like last month, the total donations were 14,117 shillings. So that convert comes to about 95, 90, about 95 dollars. So first I want to say thank you for those people who do send me donations. I do this work full time, so I do rely on the donations to run a big part of my life 
and uh, a big part of my budget actually depends on these donations so just checking on my budget actually i usually do percentages so donations the income from donations accounts for 48.89 percent of my total income yeah the other percentage comes from uh, i have a blog and uh, the blog sometimes i've i've also written a few books so sometimes i make those book sales sometimes i have some uh, ad revenue from the blog and then uh, the rest comes from uh, a number of people do send me money my i have brothers and i have family members sometimes they do give me money here and there because i'm the last born so they usually support me also financially so there is where i am so that accounts to about total comes to about 52 percent of my total income yeah so that is that and uh, i want to say thank you for those who have been sending i'm very grateful so if you also want to support me and be part of this work I will leave details in the description as well as on the screen. Yeah, then another thing I want to be doing these uh, long in-depth in -depth videos on Mondays so that uh, the questions that you have and the emails that you send me, I would want to be doing a long video that goes deep into those questions and explain them on Mondays. I want to do this because I realize that uh, there are quite a number of people who have the same issue and they send me emails. So instead of answering each email individually and repeating the same thing, why can't I just pick some of the very common questions that I receive on emails and on comments and just make a long video so that it makes my work easier and also it helps even those people who had the same questions but didn't ask. So that is what I hope to be doing going forward. Um, and then on Wednesdays, I would want to be doing live prayers mostly so that at least I show you exactly how, like practically how I, I approach prayer so that at least we can grow together. And then on Fridays, I'll be doing uh, mostly tips. So I'll want to be giving tips here and there of how you can uh, improve your praying in tongues and your prayer life. Yeah, so that was a bit of housekeeping and uh, I hope now you are much more informed about uh, how I run this work. Yeah, so that is it. Let's get into the topic of the day. So, when it comes to to when it comes to the wandering of the mind, there are basically two things. One is that uh, our mind wanders when we are praying tongues as a result of attacks from the devil. Then number two, it also wanders as a result of the human experience, as I will call it, or the issues of life. So, I'll begin with these issues of life. You see, like, the report I've just been giving to you was my financial report. And you see, one of the things is that as human beings, there are two key things in our lives. One, our finances. Two, our relationships. So, if your finances are in good order, and if you are a good steward of the finances that you have, basically you are doing good budgeting, you have a good plan of, how you spend your money and how you earn your money and how you run your affairs, then definitely you are going to have a smooth financial life. And that is a very key thing when it comes to uh, when it comes to prayer. It indirectly affects prayer, but it's a very key thing that I realized. Number two, it's about relationships. So relationships, of course, they can be uh, relationships with our family or relationships with our loved ones if you are married of course a relationship with you with your partner we have relationships with our friends and uh, relationships at work and uh, many other relationships 
So basically, these are the two key things that uh, contribute to issues of life. So what happens is that there is that parable that Jesus told about, um, uh, it's called the parable of the sower, where there was a man with seeds, one fell on the, on the road and the birds of the air came and ate it. And then there are those that fell on a rock, they could not grow because they fell on a rock. There's one that fell on fertile ground, but then that ground had thorns. So when the, when the seed began growing, the thorns pricked it. And then there was one that fell on good soil. And then Jesus explained it later on, uh, saying that it is the word of God that falls into the hearts of people. So there are people whose hearts are like stones. Uh, the word of God cannot grow there. There are people who are like, uh, just like the rod, so that anybody, like anything can take away the word of God that they have received. So when Jesus was explaining about the seed that fell on good ground, but the ground had thorns, he mentioned issues of life being the thorns that pricked it and then the seedling could not grow. So usually what happens is that uh, these finances and relationships they are what issues of life and if you are not careful these issues of life do what they affect how like they affect us heavily and then it spills over to our spiritual life a good example is that uh, if somebody is struggling financially uh, basically if he is a poor manager of his finances and probably he is in debt and uh, probably he's not a uh, very productive to the point that he can uh, raise a good income for him to run his affairs where he has to live almost like a beggar then that means that they will like you will naturally such kind of a person will naturally have a very difficult time being at peace in their mind and you see that brings up the point of your mind will be wandering so that kind of a person even if he goes to pray in tongues the mind will constantly be uh, like there will be that constant restlessness within his mind because what he cannot uh, he has not taken good care of his financial side of things then there is relationships if you have relationship issues probably you have uh, or like somebody who has issues with the family probably they are not in good terms with the parents or the brothers or the sisters or relatives or something then that will definitely make also your mind uh, unsettled. And you see, these are things that are very sensitive to us. So if there is anything wrong with them, then definitely they are going to affect how you, how you, how easy it is for you to pray in tongues without your mind wandering. So from my personal experience, I used to have challenges with finances. This was like back in 2018. And uh, I do remember, I remember I was praying to God and asking God to help me because at that time I used to take so many loans and I would, uh, I used also to gamble. So I used to love gambling. So most of the money would, like about half of the money I had, would, I would gamble it away. And then I prayed to God. And I remember one of the things that God began revealing to me was about uh, being a good steward of the money that I have. And so that is when I decided to create a budget. So actually the budget that I used today, I began creating it in 2018. So I've just been improving it until this time, like until today. So what happened was that the Lord revealed to me that with money, you have to be a good steward. Because it doesn't matter how much money you earn. At the end of the day, if you can't manage that money, you are just as miserable as somebody who doesn't have any money at all. And even there are people who, well, they have money, but just because they are poor stewards of that money, at the end of the day, they feel like, like they feel horrible within because they feel they have wasted that money because they have spent it on things they didn't plan for. So that's when the Lord was impressing on me the importance of actually planning how I spend and all that because it is something that is emotional and very sensitive to us. So if I fail in that area, I would definitely struggle in prayer. 
And actually the days when I was struggling financially, I also struggled in prayer a lot. So I would find it difficult to pray. And most of my prayer, my prayer points will just surround money, 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 money. So I would never have time to worship God and just enjoy the presence of God because my prayer life was just surrounding money, money, money. So when I began doing the budgeting and the proper accounting, I realized that it became easier for me to, to like forget about money when I am praying so that I can just pray and focus on God easily without worrying so much about money. Then there is that issue of relationships. And that one I've also had quite a, a challenging time with it, uh, especially with the family I was born in. So I was born in a, the family I was born in is a huge family. I told you I'm the last one. So in the family, I'm child number eight. So I'm the eighth child of my mother. And so because it's a very big family and uh, even the extended family where my mother comes from, uh, that family also uh, was big. They were nine children. So you can imagine nine children, each of them having over like five children or four children. So it's a very huge family. And so because we are so many people, there's, there's so much politics that goes on. And so if you are in those kind of politics that go on, the family politics with relatives and all that, they will get to you and you'll find it difficult to be at peace in your mind to pray. So what the Lord revealed to me concerning that was that I move away from, from, uh, from home. And that is exactly what I did to solve that problem. And you see somebody like Abraham, God also told him the same thing because that is how you solve those kind of issues. Abraham came from a family that they were not believers. And here he was trying to make a covenant with God. And you see, God understood that if he remains in his father's land, it will be very difficult for him to deal with the politics of what? His fathers. So the only solution was to tell Abraham to leave his father's land and the things of their father of the things of his fathers and move to a whole new place and start a new relationship with God. So that is actually what happened. So if you're also having those issues with your relatives and all that and all that, probably you should be considering now doing what? Moving away so that you have a more peaceful environment to pray and just fellowship with God. Yeah, it is quite a painful thing. It's not an easy thing that you just wake up and say, okay, let me now go. Because you have that emotional attachment to your relatives and to your family and all that. And so moving away, it does cause you some kind of pain. It's a sorrowful experience. But for the sake of your relationship with God, you do it. For the sake of my relationship with God, I did it. And today I am where I am. So those were the two main things that affect how uh, our mind operates. So this is it. If you manage your relationships well, and if you manage your finances well, then you have tackled one of the biggest problems that causes our minds to wander, so that you are at peace. And one of the ways you can do this is, you can uh, invest yourself like in things like worship music, or uh, reading scriptures because now if you read more scriptures and meditate on scriptures more your mind will shift from meditating on the politics of uh, probably the politics from your relatives and your friends and all like those people and then you will be more focused on the word of god and you'll be full of the word or if you have been listening to worship songs and all that your mind will be full of worship songs so that when it comes to praying you don't struggle or your mind doesn't wander. The other part is the one I mentioned about uh, the wandering of the mind being an attack from the devil. So usually this happens because uh, the devil understands that uh, if we are prayerful, of course, he cannot access our lives. He cannot cause us to fall. So what does he do? He puts in effort to make sure that our minds wander and that we are discouraged to pray. And so, if you want to tackle this kind of uh, 
uh, like this kind of attacks from the devil, you have to feed your mind with the right information. Because if you don't feed your mind with the right information, the devil will come and feed you with things that you don't want. Because the devil will usually come to remind you the sinful things you have done before and uh, basically anything nasty that is in your past. So sometimes, I don't know if you have ever realized this, sometimes when you're praying in tongues, you start remembering things. And some of the things you remember, they make you feel a little weird or a little uh, guilty for uh, having done them. So those are usually the thoughts of the devil, like the ones that he's trying to throw at you so that he discourages you from, from praying. So if that is happening to you, then you know that it is because you don't have sufficient good information to meditate upon. That is, you don't have enough of the word of God within you to meditate upon. And that's why the devil can afford to send you those things. God himself, God himself told us in Joshua, in the book of Joshua, to meditate upon his word day and night. The reason was that, so that the devil would have no space to come and give us wicked things to meditate upon because if you don't meditate upon the word of god you will definitely what be given wicked things to meditate upon and so this one calls for us to have a good routine of reading the word and uh, listening to worship music so that we consume good things and uh, when it comes to praying we will have more good things to meditate upon so that instead of your mind wandering into the sinful past that you 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 may have lived you are, you can actually just tune your mind to to remember the worship songs that you have been listening to and uh, this also brings me to that point of why i pray in tongues first thing in the morning because in the morning at least i don't have very many things that have happened that uh, my mind thinks a lot about so it is less congested in my mind and makes it easier for me to pray that's why uh, i do pray in tongues as fast uh, like the first thing in the morning so when it comes to these attacks of the devil you have to be very very careful because many times they come as temptations and then when you fall into that temptation the devil now uses that temptation to uh, remind you of how wicked you are and how unworthy you are and if you are not very careful these things will discourage you even from praying completely but you have to assure, assure yourself that the Lord loves you and uh, make those affirmations and uh, read aloud scriptures that uh, like Romans 8 1 there is now therefore no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus those who walk according to, to the spirit and not the flesh is it like those kind of scriptures, you can actually just take them and uh, write a number of them down. Or you can even just search on Google and look for scripture scripture affirmations. And uh, you can just take those scriptures and go through them and just read them aloud so that you confess them over your life. And that will make it a bit easier for you to believe that you are actually forgiven and that the things of the past that the devil wants to remind you are actually not true about you. And then it will make praying in tongues much easier and your mind will not wander that much. So finally, uh, this is something you need to know. When you are praying in tongues, you will realize that uh, this wandering of the mind only happens in the first phase of praying. So basically when you just start, when you start praying in tongues, you usually feel this difficulty in getting your mind composed to in tongues but this does not go on forever when you persist praying in tongues you'll realize that it quickly stops and the mind like your mind just calms down and everything disappears so most of these things only happen because one you are like your flesh is still strong and that's why you'll be thinking about the issues of life you'll be thinking of oh i don't have money for rent next month or where or where will i get money for this or that or why or how did i spend the money that he, uh, i received or something like that so those are issues and cares of life you see so when you are still starting to pray you have just come from uh from doing carnal things and definitely those carnal things are going to take a while before you 
can get them out of your system and now be fully focused on God. And this is why I usually insist on people trying to like try to set like the first 20 minutes of praying in tongues to be just getting rid of the fleshly thoughts and the things you have been engaging in, the issues of life you have been engaging in. Because we are human beings and these things we can't avoid them. You see, we have to relate with people. We have to, uh, we have to again work to make money and all that. And doing that definitely will come with a lot of politics. So you just have to create some time, like probably the first 20 minutes of your prayers, get rid of these things and get in a good state where you can actually pray to God. This is the thing I want you to take away from this video. Understand that when your mind is wandering when you're praying in tongues, it is not just uh, an attack from the devil. And it is not just that you can whisk it away in a single day or there is just a button that you press and it completely just disappears. This is deeply engraved in our lifestyle and how we live and what we consume and who we are and uh, the kind of people we relate with and the kind of places we work at and you see, there are so many things. So all this cumulatively they come to uh, determine what our minds are, like what our minds dwell on when we are actually praying in tongues. The Bible mentions the issue of, uh, uh, there is that scripture in Ecclesiastes that says, uh, the sleep of a laborer is sweet, whether he eats little or much, but the, uh, but the abundance of the rich man permits him no sleep. So you see, there are people who, they may have the money, they may have worked hard and they have the money, but you see, they are too much focused on how will I do what, uh, like how will I invest next or how will I secure my investments. So these are the kind of people that even if they go to pray, their minds are on just investment, 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 because they spend a lot of their day and a lot of their time and a big chunk of their heart is just on what? Investments. So while investing is not a bad thing by like in itself these people have to realize that there has to be a balance because there has to be your spiritual needs and your physical needs so that you don't lean too much on your physical needs and forget about your spiritual needs so it is a balance that actually requires wisdom for you to balance and know that this is how i do this, this is how i do this then i also did a poll uh, a few weeks ago where i was asking you about uh, uh, when do you pray in tongues and the biggest uh, like the majority were saying they pray in tongues whenever they have time and that's like to me I concluded like these are people like m people who pray whenever they have time these are people whom praying is an afterthought that's why it is what when there is time so you see this life has very many things and uh, I'm taking an example of someone who is like a mother who has children. You see, like children, you have to, uh, taking care of them is a lot of work and you have to be watching over them almost the entire time. But you see, what you have to do is that you have to realize that you have to uh, set specific time for things. And this is something I came to realize, that if I don't set specific time for praying, then definitely other things of life will come and take over all my time. And that's why I had just to block some time and say, this is time for praying. Regardless of what emergency is befalling me, this is time for praying. And I said to myself, even if somebody is in an emergency and really wants to talk to me, I said at that time, it is better for them to just call on God because what? I will not what? take any kind of interruption. And you see, when you do that, even God acknowledges it and any kind of needs that were on you in that particular time that you have said to pray, God will automatically just take care of them. So that if somebody need, like if, if somebody was in an emergency and they needed you at that time that you have said to pray, what will happen is that what? God will just sort them out. Because you see, God understands that he doesn't want you to be interrupted when you are fellowshipping with him. So he will put away all those distractions. So I'll stop there for today. If you have any further questions, you can always ask in the comments or you can send me a personal, you can send me an email on the email that I provide and then I'll do my best to answer and go into detail about it so that I help you pray better. 
Again, if you'd like to donate to this work, I will leave details in the description as well as on the screen. You're welcome to send your donations. I will greatly appreciate. God bless you.